India, Tally uh, is a very popular accounting software. In the US, QuickBooks is equally as popular, right? Off late, QuickBooks had gained certain traction within India until they decided to discontinue their services for the Indian market starting on 31st of March. Right? So as on 31st of March, I believe QuickBooks does not provide any more support or it does not provide any new services in the Indian subcontinent. Right? That being said, it is the perfect time to move from QuickBooks into a much more powerful accounting package like ERP Next, wherein you can do so many more things as part of your accounting package. Right? I'll just stop sharing my video so that the lag is a little less, I think. Great. All right. So for today's agenda, what are we going to cover? The first topic, why should we migrate or what are the key reasons why a user would want to migrate from QuickBooks into ERP Next? Okay. Then we will go into our discussion regarding <laughs> the tools which ERP Next provides for us to have a seamless migration. And we'll also look at a couple of examples that we have done in the past where we've migrated not just one or two years, but more than 15 years of data from QuickBooks into ERP Next. Okay. And finally, we'll go ahead and we'll have a look at some of the features within ERP Next that make it a powerful accounting system. Some of the features which you will not find within QuickBooks and are very, very important for proper reporting, for proper decision making, and to have a scalable accounting system, knowing that your organization or that your business is going to continuously grow, right? And once we finish these three agenda topics, we'll go ahead into a Q&A session. So like Tejas mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, feel free to put it into the chat. We have Archal who will be moderating your questions and responding to certain questions on the chat itself. Certain questions we'll be taking up during the Q&A and whatever is remaining, uh, if there are any remaining questions due to time constraints, then of course we can take that up or uh, we will be posting that on our LinkedIn uh, profile. So follow our LinkedIn page and keep in uh, touch with the new upcomings in ERP next that are happening. Right. So let's get into the first part of why we should migrate. So other than the fact that QuickBooks has stopped services in India, right? That is one of the reasons, of course, but that is not the most primary reason, right? If you want certain powerful features, you would need to migrate into QuickBooks for these following reasons right? Functionality, scalability, integration, reporting, customization. Now, most of us here on the call who work with ERPs or we work with certain technologies, these are certain buzzwords you would have heard everywhere. But what do these words exactly mean, right? When we say, okay, ERP Next has better functionality, ERP Next is more scalable. What exactly does it mean, right? So let's start off with functionality. Let's take a small example, right, where there is a trading concern. Okay, there's a trading concern. Now, you may know that QuickBooks is purely and only an accounting system. It does not have any other ancillary features like <clears throat> sales management, procurement management, uh, stock management, inventory, so on and so forth, right? Now imagine a trading company or let's say a manufacturing company or any organization who uses a multitude of different functions. Can they only rely on something like QuickBooks, which is purely an accounting system? Absolutely not. Using ERP Next, they can do accounting not only as an accounting function, but they can do accounting from procurement. They can do accounting from sales. They can do accounting from inventory and so on and so forth, right? So the kind of functionalities and the breadth of functionalities, which we will also explore in a little more detail in the third part of this agenda, is far more in ERP Next as compared to QuickBooks, right? Things like 
segmented accounting, things like period closures, things like workflows. These are all functionalities which you will not find in a small package like um, QuickBooks. Right? These are functions that you are typically, uh, you know, uh, expected to find in an enterprise level system like SAP or Oracle. And now, of course, ERP Next being the game changer has come in with all these features, all these kind of functionalities for we all know the kind of costs and the kind of maintenance ERP Next requires, right? It's minimal. It's absolutely minimal, right? Second reason is the scalability. Now, when we say scalability, that also means that let's say today your organization is processing maybe 100 transactions a month. Yeah. Tomorrow, your system or your organization is transacting a lakh transactions a month. Do you think that same QuickBooks package, that same plan that you're in, will be viable to scale this kind of volume? Absolutely not. Right. ERP Next will allow you to expand your database, expand your hosting options, and give you a lot more scalability when it comes to a growing organization. Right? <laughs> so, for example, tomorrow you open multiple branches, right? You open multiple companies, you open different lines of businesses. QuickBooks is a system which will not allow you to capture all these different angles or all these different aspects in one single system you will definitely need to get multiple systems had you been on quickbooks but now with erp next it's very easy to scale multiple branches multiple companies multiple lines of business add volume and still have a very reliable very robust erp which is very less likely to have any kind of performance issue right unlike uh, you know, so the, the people here who have been working with QuickBooks will relate more to what I'm talking about because they have felt the pain or they have felt the drawbacks of QuickBooks when this kind of volume or when these kind of organizational level changes happen into the system. Right. Third point that we see here, integration, that's a no brainer. We all know ERP Next is open source, which is the first thing we think of when you think of ERP Next. We think of open source. And it is these open source capabilities, it's these open source capabilities that allow ERP Next to scale the way it does, right? So let's not just talk about a small business. Let's talk about a business like a bank, right? Let's talk about a business like a bank who has multiple services that they provide. They provide uh, loan services, they provide card services, they provide many different services, each which have their own system on the front end. Right now, had they used QuickBooks as their back end accounting, had they used QuickBooks as their main back end for reporting, they would never be able to completely capture the accounting impact from all these different systems, could be a credit card system, could be a loan management system, they would never be able to capture the accounting happening here and integrate it back into ERP Next, right? But of, uh, into QuickBooks. But with ERP Next, you can very easily use things like webhooks, you can use REST APIs, and you can integrate the financial impact of those source systems into ERP Next as a simple journal entry or as a simple voucher, which can be automated as part of this integration, right? So let's say a bank gives a loan to a particular person in their front office, in their branch office, they will go ahead and create a loan creation entry. And that loan creation entry will automatically through an integration post a journal within ERP next, which could be loan uh, loan given debit to bank account something like that right so you can just imagine the kind of uh, different use cases we may have when it comes to integrating the accounting impact of various um, source systems integrating the accounting impact of various industry specific softwares yeah so most of you would have seen or would have worked with certain systems 
which are completely independent of the accounting system could be a crm system right could be a uh, uh, anything else could be a project management system could be anything else right these systems will very easily be integrated based on the kind of accounting impact we want to relay back in the systems now if you look at larger erps right they have certain specific products so some of you may be aware may not be aware there is a product known as fusion accounting hub which only does this particular function where it reads data from a particular source system understands what kind of event is occurring and based on that event creates journal entries into the enterprise erp software right the licenses for this kind of products are uh, you know extremely high extremely difficult to maintain for even medium sized businesses who have you know maybe 100 cr turnover you know 500 cr turnover so ERP Next is a great option not only for you know startups and upcoming businesses, but also established businesses who have a good turnover, who have a large quantum of data, and whose operations are not only growing day by day, but also their team and the kind of business that they do is also growing day by day. Right? So this is one of the key aspects when it comes to integration that we keep in mind. Please go ahead and drop your questions, if any, in the chat, right? And we'll definitely uh, try to respond to as many as we can, right? Fourthly, we want to talk about the reporting mechanism, right? If you've used QuickBooks earlier, you know the kind of reports that it generates. Uh, I'll give you one generic, uh, we'll give you some generic reports, for example. What it does not do is allow you to have a tool where you can build your own reports, you can add your own columns, you can change the look and feel of those reports using some kind of report builder or script report builder. Yeah. And definitely there are no powerful dashboarding or BI tools available within QuickBooks, which is, I feel, the most important aspect of any ERP system, right? So as the management, as a decision maker of your organization, how the data is input is a secondary concern. The primary concern for any decision maker of an organization is how that data is reflected as an output, right? So the reflection of data within ERP Next is far, far more advanced compared to the visualizations you would get in QuickBooks. You would have seen the dashboarding facilities, the ways we can make charts within ERP Next, the way we can make <clears throat> number cards within erp next within those number cards you also have a ton of functionality to track the the changes on a weekly basis or a daily basis or a monthly basis and all of these can happen directly from the front end as a user right you don't have to get a development team you don't have to have a uh, uh, you know a maintenance partner or a support partner these kind of reporting changes dashboarding changes visualizations and business intelligence can be done by you and end user itself that is one of the key differences that uh you know erp next brings as a as a niche erp player right so for those who have not explored the erp next reporting i urge you to join our uh you know our webinars that are coming up which will also go into uh, we'll go deep into the reporting mechanism on how we can create these kind of reports and what kind of flexibility as a layman right as a, as someone who does not understand coding you know as someone who does not understand any kind of low code no code platform who has no uh, programming language skills such as myself how we can use these kind of bi tools and build reports that we require yeah. and finally the customization part, which again is synonymous with the open source ideology. So when it comes to open source, all of us who have worked with ERP Next or have seen ERP Next know the kind of flexibility that it provides in terms of customization, right? Not just form level customization, where we want to maybe open a couple of fields, capture some additional information, 
but also customization related to automating certain features, right? So we can customize the features in a way to make it more user friendly, to align it to certain processes of an organization, and most importantly, customize certain requirements to suit the local compliance of a particular organization, right? Companies within India would have far different compliance parameters as compared to any organization in the US, in the UK, in the Middle East, so on and so forth, right? How does one system manage to be so scalable that you can have multiple entities in multiple countries and still comply to their requirements? The answer is customization within ERP Next, right? Customization is found everywhere in the system, not only on a form level or a feature level, but also on a print format level, on reporting level, on integration level, and so on and so forth, right? So customizations are the backbone or are the prime method methodology with which ERP Next was built. And the low-code, no-code platform, which you may be familiar with on ERP Next, is what allows us to give ERP Next the flavor which was missing in the market currently. Right? Systems are restricted. Systems like QuickBooks may be restrictive, wherein let's say you're a you're a construction company, you need your invoice to look in a certain way. How do you get that invoice to look like that? And how do you print it out directly from QuickBooks? It's a very tough, very tough mechanism to build, right? In ERP Next. It's as simple as building a new print format, using certain uh, CSS to customize the look and feel, and going ahead and deploying that for, for the users to print. So these are some of the key reasons why you would consider moving from QuickBooks or moving from an accounting-only system into a future-proof, full-fledged ERP. Right? So if you require any further information on why the migration or what kind of use cases you may have in case you want to maybe present this to someone in your management, you can definitely get in touch with us and we can help you put across certain points, which will give you a very strong use case to move your ERP system into ERP next. All right, great. Let's move into the second part. Um, I hope whatever questions have been posted, uh, we'll have a look under the fourth point of the agenda. Uh, till then, whatever is being answered on the chat, if that helps your uh, case, please do take a note of the answers. Also, if you have any uh, friends or uh, co-workers or colleagues that you think may benefit from today, today's agenda, you can also share this link with them and ask them to join in when we by, while we move into the next section of how this migration actually happens, right? What kind of tools are available, how we do this migration, and so on and so forth. All right. Great. So let's talk about some easy migration tools, and let's talk about how ERP Next enables us to migrate this volume of data. Could be one year's worth of data, could be 10 years' worth of data, could be 50 years worth of data. How can we migrate this data from your QuickBooks into your ERP Next, right? Now for this, there are multiple approaches, right? There are multiple approaches. Some clients or some organization want a transaction by transaction migration for the complete period. So every invoice that they have generated, every payment that they have generated, every journal entry they have created, everything some organizations want on a line-to-line -line level. Why that is? It's simple for reporting purposes, right? Why would an organization want purchase history for the past 10 years? The answer is simple. To analyze the different, uh, the, uh, to analyze the variation in costs of the same item over that particular period, right? Some item which they may be using on a regular basis, they would definitely want certain analysis on the cost trends of the, or the pricing trends of that particular item, right? 
Like this, there are many other use cases on why an organization would want a line by line migration into ERP Next. Another approach, which is a quicker approach, is to do an account balance migration. Right? This works on a trial balance level. Okay. And this works with the assumption that your closing trial balance will be migrated into the system and the transactions that happen for the year will not be visible all right so only your accounting impact or the uh, impact of the transactions on your account balances will be migrated into the system these are the two key approaches when it comes to migration into erp next either a transactional migration or an account balance migration okay these are the two key ones now what do these two migrations look like as a quickbooks user right so here we just have a sample quickbook file for you we have a sample quickbook file for you and let's explore this file uh, let me know if you can see it clearly all right perfect so let me start off this is a file that you would generate from your quickbook uh, this is what we call as a journal report or a gl report and this will be the basis for our migration into QuickBooks, right? This will be the basis for our migration. So what you'll notice when you look at this is that, second guys, I'll just, when you extract this report as a QuickBooks user, what happens is that you have complete visibility from one single uh, one single report into all your bills, all your expenses, <laughs> all the invoices, so on and so forth, right? Uh, just give me one second, guys. All right, perfect. So you can see that the system from QuickBooks gives us a ready report with all the different transactions that you have entered throughout whatever time period you say, right? So for example, this is for the time period of, I think this is for the year of 21, 22, for example, 2021, right? You can see all your different date ranges and things. So this one single report is what we use as the basis for a migration, okay? Now you can see that other than the kind of transaction we have, QuickBooks also has its own reference number, right? QuickBooks also has its own reference number. Now, this reference number is absolutely essential if you want to reconcile the system properly, right? Absolutely essential if you want to reconcile your migration properly. So somewhere and somehow, we have to capture this QuickBooks reference number in ERP Next itself, right? You would know that ERP Next has its own naming mechanism, its own document naming rules, right? And we have to ensure that the document name in ERP Next is the same as the reference number in QuickBooks, right? And this is how we can know if we have any gaps in our migration. If there are any mismatches, we can quickly identify which particular entry or which particular um, transaction has been missed out by us during the migration, right? So this is all about your reference number. Now, here we have a description, all right? And let me also just quickly open this instance for you, all right? And go ahead and give you a quick glimpse of what that looks like. So I'm not, uh, in this meeting, we're not going to go ahead and give you an intro of ERP Next. I think most of the people on the call have seen ERP Next somewhere or the other during their, uh, you know, during their course of uh, regular work. What we'll do today is head directly here and we'll have a look at how these things will translate. All right. So here you can see a memo description and this memo description will become a user remark or it will become a description on this particular line or the journal level, right? As a particular reference name or a user remark over here, right? <laughs> then we have your account section and this shows the different 
natural accounts or the ledger accounts into which that particular transaction will be posted so it could be a bank account it could be it could be any any particular expense asset uh, liability equity you know income could be any kind of entry like that it could be any kind of entry like that those accounts will simply be selected here right and further to that we can see that there is the amount section right now this shows you the debit and the credit amount which will be migrated similarly you have a party breakup here where you would map this transaction is booked against a particular customer or against a particular supplier and if yes then what kind of customer and supplier and the same would be mapped in our system as a party type and also as that particular party that we have right this is how the system will map this particular journal or this particular migration once it has been moved into the system okay and finally when you have a look at how uh, you know how your screen will look once the migration is done it will look something like this right it will look something like this uh, just give me one second guys give me one second all right share our screen again right, let me know if it's visible Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So once your QuickBooks migration is done in the ERP Next system, this is what you would see. You would have the QuickBooks transaction number with which you can reconcile the particular transaction. You would have all the different accounts, as you see here, right? all the different accounts, and you have the amounts as well. Similarly, you have your user remarks, which is nothing but the memo description of your particular entry now this could be a journal entry it could be an expense it could be any of these different kind of transactions which you have put into quickbooks right this is what we call as a transactional migration into the system okay this is what we call as a transactional migration now please keep in mind that when you do migrate from quickbooks into erp next make sure the migration is on a journal level of course there are many other transactions which do not have a financial impact like your purchase orders your sales orders your work orders so on so uh, your purchase orders and your sales orders to be uh, to be very specific right however quickbooks being an accounting only system it's given that all the transactions within quickbooks will 100% have an accounting impact Right? they will 100% have an accounting impact so these transactions we as part of the transactional migration will migrate it like this on the journal level with the relevant posting date so the transactions based on these particular dates will be posted in that particular accounting period right all these details will be captured including the reference number like so that you can see here so that you can very easily go ahead and <laughs> reconcile at a later stage some clients also prefer to have some supporting vouchers against these kind of migrated transactions right so within erp next you can use the attach file and let's say this was a purchase invoice or an invoice given by a particular vendor we can also go ahead and attach the soft copy of these invoices within the system right so finally, when all these transactions have been migrated into ERP Next, your complete trial balance will be tallied, will balance with your QuickBooks closing uh, TB. Similarly, if you want to see the transactional level details, you want to see the memo uh, description, you want to see the party-wise breakup, or you want to see the account-wise general ledger, all of this will be visible to you within the erp next <clears throat> user interface itself right now you can very easily say that my quickbooks migration has been successfully complete 
and you can go ahead and dispose and cancel off your quickbooks uh, uh, usage right you can easily migrate all your uh, users into erp next and if they want to see any historical data you can go ahead and see that all your historical data is available on a transaction to transaction level right so every particular bill raised by a supplier every journal entry created every check payment made will be a separate journal entry for us in the system that will be a separate journal entry for us in the system great now how does this massive sheet right you would see the sheet looks complex you know no idea of how this can be quickly mapped or how this can be migrated into erp next the biggest problem people face or the biggest pain point that organizations have to not move to a new erp is the complexity of migration that comes along with it right so it's not very easy forget quickbooks but any other system if you want to migrate from that it's not the most straightforward thing to simply take the sheet and upload it right if it was that easy then migration would be a two second job the biggest pain point people have when it comes to migration is the transformation phase okay so some of you may be aware that data migration comes in three steps step and the, these steps are called the etl process okay so the first step in the etl is the e which is also known as extraction of data and this kind of file which we have extracted from quickbooks is the first step of the migration process right now this is in the format that is given by quickbooks itself right this is not any custom sorry this is not any transformed format as per ERP next. This is just a format which has been extracted from QuickBooks. Now, the second step of the ETL process, we have covered the extraction, which is the E. Now, the T stands for transformation of data, right? So, after extraction, we move into the T phase, which is the transformation of data. Now, this is by far the most complex part of any migration process where we need to convert or transform the extracted data into a format which is readable by erp next right readable by erp next but of course erp next being a market leader in certain technologies in certain features they have gone ahead and made a very easy to use migration tool which will minimize the kind of transformation efforts that you need right it will minimize the kind of transformation efforts that you need how has erp next done this for us it has done this using the data import tool right now data import in itself is nothing special almost every system which is a good erp has this kind of feature right what erps don't have is the dynamic mapping which erp next provides right so when i save this i can simply without using a template without transforming data into this kind of a readable format what i can do is i can simply click on attach right and i can go ahead and directly upload my file from here right now when i directly upload this file you'll notice that currently the system is giving me multiple warning issues Oops. All right. Give me warning issues. What this shows us is that although I have all my data here, currently the the readability of this data is not correct, right? So ERP Next allows us to do this transformation of data directly from the system itself. Directly from the system, we need not transform all this into some other format, copy paste, you know, hundred things, reconcile whether the copy paste was correct spend multiple man days on just doing the transformation before loading the data which is the third phase of the etl process right so e stands for ex extraction t trans stands for transformation and l stands for loading the data so watch how easy erp next makes this transformation simply by using map columns now whatever format you upload you can very easily map those columns right with the fields within erp next 
So the date field that you see here will become my posting date. The transaction type will become my turn entry type. All right. The number will become nothing but a series and so on and so forth. So like this, I can go ahead and map. You can see debit accounting entries, credit accounting entries. Customer is nothing but a party. Right? Similarly, we have a party here as well. Right? An account is nothing but the account ID that we'll be using. Account number, account ID, memo description is nothing but the user remarks. Yeah. And the name is nothing but the ID of that particular thing. So now you can see if I just hit submit over here. The system will automatically transform all these fields into something that is readable by ERP next. And once it's readable, you, you would have noticed it was a simple 10 second job to do this transformation. And once this transformation is complete, it's as easy as hitting the start import button. It's as easy as hitting the start import button. Now, of course, there's you can see all these have become green now, right? Now, there's a lot more when it comes to migration. You can get in touch with us if you have any particular requirements regarding migration. The aim was to show you the kind of ease of use ERP Next brings when it comes to transforming data and also loading the data. So, loading is as simple as just hitting the start import button, right? And your complete ETL process is finished in less than one day all right in case of any exceptions during the migration the system will show you all the warnings it will tell you exactly where the data needs to be fixed in the upload format right it tells you exactly where the data needs to be fixed and it also converts or transforms this data on the interface itself without having to do any kind of excel work copy paste work so on and so forth Right. So this is one of the, uh, you know, key things we wanted to discuss regarding the migration. And of course, you see, once this sheet is migrated or once this particular format is migrated, it will quickly create a um, journal entry like so with all these relevant details mapped on the front end itself. Right. So we at Indictrans, we have done migrations, like I mentioned, not just for one or two years, but for more than 15 years of certain organizations who would want that data, who have certain legal compliances to have that data on any ERP that they go with. This is one of the key reasons why organizations should consider the ease of use of migrating from QuickBooks into ERP next. So the main, the main pain point that users have that, you know, the transformation is going to be a nightmare. We have 15 years worth of data. We have lakhs and lakhs of transactions. How are we going to migrate? How are we going to reconcile? All these issues are now resolved when, <clears throat> when it comes to the new ERP next system. All right. Okay. Now, once your migration is completed, what kind of features does ERP next provide which are far more powerful in terms of an accounting package as compared to QuickBooks? The number one thing being the segmented accounting approach, right? Segmented accounting is something that does not happen. And segmented accounting is also called as accounting dimensions within our system, within the ERP next system. And what this basically means is that it gives you reporting, right? not only it gives you reporting not only on an account level but also on a segment level that could be a line of business that could be a cost center that could be a department right it could be any other dimension or any other uh any other line that we want to manage so for example let's say we have a marketing account we have a marketing account okay marketing expense account right we know the marketing expense for the entire organization is let's say 10 lakh rupees and as an organization i have multiple lines of business 
right? I have multiple lines of business. I have one manufacturing line. I have uh, one uh, services line. I have one trading line, right? Similarly, I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, right? So now ERP Next will help you get reporting on what exact profitability or what kind of balance sheet you have on a segment level that could be a line of business segment that could be a department so you can say okay accounts department uh, uh sales department hr department so tomorrow if the management wants to know what my profitability of the sales department is they can easily allocate expenses allocate income allocate assets and liabilities on these kind of different segments right these kind of different segments so finally when they go ahead and look at their profit and loss statement right they can filter out that this is the entire company's profitability i want to see the profitability for only a particular cost center or a department or i want to see it only for a particular project you know so i can filter out these different dimensions and see my profitability i can see my balance sheet also on these bases similarly i can see a cash flow statement as well per department right and this will give you a lot more decision making powers when it comes to <laughs> an accounting package right now of course accounting in erp next is very vast it's virtually impossible to cover all the features within the time that we have but one another great feature i'd like to show you is the bank reconciliation tool right bank reconciliation is a nightmare for most uh you know accountants especially the ones working on tally what erp next allows you to do it allows you to automatically migrate your bank statement on a weekly on a daily on a monthly basis and based on certain factors like the amount of the transaction the party of the transaction the reference number of the transaction you can just simply hit this auto reconcile button and the system will go ahead and try to auto match your system transactions with your bank statement transactions within seconds right and of course there would be certain transactions which were not able to reconcile those we can go ahead and reconcile manually right so these kind of features which you would find normally in big ticket erp systems ERP systems which cost upward of $100,000 per year. These features you can find very easily within ERP Next itself. Right? You need not have in, uh, you know, a large, bulky, difficult to maintain ERP. You need not even have a small, uh, you know, singular functional ERP like QuickBooks, which does only accounting. You can have a full-fledged ERP for the cost of a single accounting package right single accounting package so these are just some of the powerful these are some of the newer tools which we wanted to explore of course there's a lot more regarding the way we do revaluation regarding the way the system manages multi-currency multi-company transactions the kind of intercompany features it has which is not available in quickbooks at all right so when one organization buys and sells with another organization so these kind of features we are uh, going to explore in a lot more detail in some of our upcoming webinars so do do sign up to our linkedin page do follow us and keep in touch with all the new activities and all the new comings that we have going on within erp next itself all right so i hope that uh, this session has been of some uh, use to you and you have understood certain things that you previously may not have an idea on right let's open the floor for the next five minutes for a quick q a uh, if there's any unanswered questions in the chat you can let me know else you can see my email id over here uh, you can get in touch with us in with us in any of our offices around india and abroad and we'll help you answer your queries and questions to the best of our ability So guys, any questions, uh, do let me know. We have another five minutes and then we'll go ahead and disconnect our webinar.
Also, if you don't feel like asking the questions over here, you can go ahead and simply email us. And once you uh, get your uh, qu queries answered, you can share it across with your circle if you feel that will help them at all. All right. Uh, so I think someone has asked a question wherein they think they they wish to move from tally. Uh, do you wonder if you need Zoho books and ERP next? Uh, that's a topic where I can spend another one hour on. And the short answer to that is definitely ERP next is something that you should consider as a very, very, very strong alternative to Zoho books, right? Uh, why that is, we can get on. We can get on a call uh, whenever you like, and we can discuss in detail your use cases, what kind of work you're doing in Tally, and the main, you know, objective behind moving into either Zoho or ERP next. Right. Great. So I think if there's any other questions, uh, you can definitely get in touch. Uh, if not, thank you guys so much for joining today's meeting. Really appreciate all of you being here. And once again, from myself and from the entire Indictrans team, uh, thank you and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Krishan. Thank you. And thank you all who, who have joined this call. So uh, if any questions, you can share us with the questions on uh, contact at direct indictransic.com. I'm sharing this contact email on the chat. We will resolve those questions and queries to you on leave as well. So thank you for joining this call and you can leave. Thank you. Thanks, Tejas. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.